Welcome back. Let's turn to our newsmaker tonight. Kashmiri IAS topper of 2009, All India topper Shah Faisal, who quit the services earlier this week, has finally broken his silence. Faisal says he quit to remind the central government of its responsibility towards the state of Jammu and Kashmir and the continuing killings in the state. He had quit the service on Wednesday amidst reports that he may be joining former Chief Minister Omar Abdullah's national conference and contesting elections this year. Let's then take a look. Let's be joined by our newsmaker today, Shah Faisal, breaking his silence, joining me tonight. Appreciate you joining us, uh, Shah Faisal. You resigned from the IS in January 2019, protesting against the continuing killings in the valley. Why have you resigned now? Why in this election year, 10 years after joining the service, the killings, Shah Faisal, didn't start in the last year? I think I had the choice to choose the timing of my resignation because it was a very important thing for me. Uh, I, had the, I had just one job, I had just one life, and I could use it only once. So I took some time to think about whatever was happening around me. And I thought about, in, uh, thought about it in my mind and thought about solutions, thought about what possibly can be done about it. And I needed a proper time to do it. And I realized that this was the proper time to do it. I didn't want to have a knee-jerk reaction to something. Right. I wanted to ha ha have a very calibrated, very well thought out response. Are you saying your resignation is not linked to the fact that we are in an election year, that elections are on the, on the anvil, the fact that many are saying you are possibly seeing a political career for yourself? There's absolutely nothing wrong in that. And uh, to bring in all these issues into a public narrative at a time when the governments are in transition, when things are, being, you know, things are changing and when people are making their choices, I think that's the time when possibly these issues can be communicated to the people. I don't see anything wrong in talking about issues at a time when people are primed up to listen to those issues. No, but are you going to be speaking now about political issues connected to Jammu and Kashmir or actually take the political plunge and have you decided to join a political party? Much rumors that you are joining Omar Abdullah's party. For me, what matters is that in Kashmir or in Jammu and Kashmir state this time, my idea is to kind of how we can possibly reimagine the electoral politics. We have seen the youngsters here have lost faith in the way elections are being conducted. We have a history of rigging in the state. People have lost faith in the institutions of governance, institutions of democracy. So as somebody who has seen the system from very close, I see it as an opportunity to maybe, to maybe uh, build faith of the youngsters and the young generation in these institutions. But, but there is some talk, Shah Faisal, that you were joining, as I said, Omar Abdullah's party. Now others are suggesting you are actually lining up behind the separatist Huriyat, tell us now very clearly, what are your plans at the moment when it comes to joining electoral politics? I have, what, what I have done today is that I have told the youth of the Kashmir that no decision will be taken without consulting them. So as of now, I have ruled out joining any existing political party because if the idea is to reimagine and to create a new sort of politics in the valley, that it may not be possible to do so within the confines and the constraints of the existing parties. When it comes to joining Hurriyat, honestly speaking, I don't think I have that strength of character. The kind of struggles which Hurriyat people go through, I cannot possibly at this stage of my life go through those struggles. So I am choosing, a, choosing an easier option, which is electoral politics. You know, I remember talking to you, Shah Faisal, when you joined the IAS 10 years ago. You were full of idealism. You were excited about being part of the government, making it, a, becoming an agent of change. What has changed in the last decade that makes you believe being a politician is now better than being a bureaucrat? It depends the kind of challenges which you are dealing with. So as a civil servant, it has been more like the administrative issues, the developmental issues that we have been dealing with and very successfully dealing with and very satisfactorily dealing with. IAS has given me an opportunity, an amazing opportunity, in fact, to work for the welfare of the people. But then we are dealing with political issues at the moment, and those issues are even more urgent than those developmental issues. What do you do to people? Uh, you give them roads, you give them water supplies, you give them electricity, but you snatch their sense of dignity. You disempower them, you depoliticize them. What do you do with that? So 
So what do you do with that road and water and electricity connection? So basically, if there's a problem, which is a political problem, it's important that the response also will have to be political. You know, also when you top that exam uh, a decade ago, you were seen as a role model, a Kashmiri topping the All India IS exams. Today, there are voices on social media who say that by leaving the IS in protest of the killings in the valley, you have let down the Indian state, you are speaking the language of separatists, that the nationalist Shah Faisal is now anti-national. What would you tell them today? I think people of India need to be made to understand the ground realities in Kashmir. I have been here for 10 years. I'm somebody who has been part of the Indian steel frame. I'm not somebody who's going to lie and get carried away by emotions. There is a problem in the field. Our education, our health, our tourism, everything will work only if something happens to the political dispute and something happens about the violent conflict which has been here. So it's not about role models anymore. I think it's more about who tells what kind of truth to the people of India. I think people of India should appreciate that I'm being very forthright and honest with them and I I'm telling, telling them the truths which possibly no one has told them before. But you know, let's take a hard look at politics in the valley. Polling at times has been in single digits. Poll boycotts are enforced at gunpoint. Young people seem to be alienated. Some of them are turning to stone pelting against the army. How can you reimagine politics that you're talking about in a seemingly hopeless situation? Are you being completely romantic about what's happening when the reality is so different? Gun has a context. Gun, gun has not been here always. Gun came after 1987. In fact, gun, it was, the democ it was the failure of democracy that brought gun into Kashmir. And my belief is that if somehow we can strengthen the institutions of dem democracy, people will not need a gun to express themselves. People will be expressing themselves through different means. Shah Faisal, I appreciate your joining me here on the show tonight. Clearly, winds of change in a way blowing through Kashmir. I wish you well with your political ambitions and one day becoming a member of parliament. Who knows? Thanks very much for joining me. Thanks for watching the video. For more such news and updates, please like, share, and subscribe to India Today. Also, check out our other great videos from our channel. We know you would love to.